All right. Hi, everybody. Back in November of 2023, I flew across the planet to Shenzhen, China. And Shenzhen is a place that a lot of people call the Silicon Valley of hardware. And as a researcher that does a lot of hardware, I knew this was a place that I needed to learn more about. But I grew up in an English-speaking country. I didn't speak a word of Mandarin Chinese. But I thought this was going to be fine. Of course, people always travel to countries where they don't know the language. But I thought, personally, that I would be especially ready to deal with the language barrier because my research was focused for the last few years around smart glasses. And me and my team had built a custom language translation app for smart glasses. This is an app that listens to speech in the world around you in any language and then translates it into your native tongue and overlays that in text on your vision so you can understand what other people are saying. So I confidently landed in China and you know, skipped out of the airport into a cab. And the cab driver turned around and looked at me and said some words that I didn't understand, but immediately overlaid on my vision, I could see, hello, where do you want to go? And at that moment, I was giddy. I felt like a cyborg. I could understand what was going on around me. And I started confidently explaining back to them uh, you know, where I was going to my hotel and where it was. And the cab driver was just looking at me confused. And I realized in that moment that, for some reason, my Chinese cab driver wasn't also wearing smart glasses. <laughs> so of course, you know, I fumbled out my phone from my pocket and opened up a more classical uh, machine translation application. And we kind of fumbled around for a couple minutes trying to be able to understand each other. Uh, you know, eventually, he could understand what I said, and we were on our way. Uh, but over the course of the next few weeks of me visiting China, as I started to fall in love with the culture there and the people and the crazy fast pace, I found pretty much all of my interactions were kind of mired with this issue of translation, where I thought that these enhancements that I had brought with me were going to help me to be better and smarter. They really were just kind of a detriment that got in the way. I thought that I would pull up with my high-tech smart glasses and be like Tony Stark in China, but I ended up being more like a cyborg Mr. Bean. <laughs> and so. At that moment, I decided that I was going to learn to speak Mandarin Chinese. And so when I made that decision, I had to switch in my head the technology that I was building. I had to switch from something I was outsourcing things to, something that would communicate for me, to something that would teach me how to communicate. And since then, I've been working on language learning smart glasses. And I could say, to be honest, that I've probably spent more time working on the language learning smart glasses than I've actually spent learning the language. But I like to think that both of them are kind of making progress. So how do language learning smart glasses even differ in the first place from translation glasses? Why don't you just run translation all the time and learn the language like that? Well, the problem is that running translation all the time overlaid on your vision becomes a crutch. If everything that you hear around you in the foreign language you're trying to learn is presented to you in the language, in your native language, you don't actually spend any time trying to process, understand, and translate that language into your, uh, and, and understand that language. Imagine every time you went swimming, you wore floaties. You might be able to hop into the pool every so often, but you're never actually going to learn how to swim. So the translation features are a crutch, but they're also useful. We don't want to just completely get rid of translation because it helps you understand information better, and it can help you grow your vocabulary over time. So one of the first features that we built out for the language learning smart glasses is unknown word translation. You can see this up here on the left. This is a system that doesn't translate everything that you're saying. It translates only the words that you don't know. Imagine you travel to a country where they speak a language you're trying to learn, and somebody says to you something like, hey, want to come to the library with me and my friends? If you're maybe an advanced beginner, you might be able to understand most of the words they said, most of the grammar, but you might miss just, just one or two words. Maybe you missed library. But that one word is central to you actually understanding what the person is saying to you. And so with this system, we are going to translate just that word that you don't know, so you can fill in the gap, so you can understand what someone else is saying. You can perform at a little bit higher level than your fluency allows you to and build up your vocabulary over time. And actually, I'm running this application on my glasses right now. And our friend, the mannequin here, is running it on his smart glasses. So we have hooked up a camera into the eye of this mannequin. And I'm going to show you really quickly. Um, yeah, so it's running live. So this is a Russian example. So imagine if you're somebody who speaks Russian, 
and you're trying to learn English, you travel to an English-speaking country, the system is, maybe I'll turn it up a little bit so you can see it better, the system is translating just the rare word that I say, and you can see your beautiful selves. This is real and live. The system is translating just the rare words that I say into Russian so that that speaker can practice their ability to interpret the things that are being said in English while not kind of having this system be a crutch for them or something that they over-rely on. If we could switch back to the slides. Another system that we've developed is for, imagine you're not actually traveling to the country where you're trying to learn that language. And imagine you're trying to practice at home. The best way to practice that new language is for you to listen to the language and for you to speak it. But we don't always have access to people around us who, can, who we can speak with. And so we're developing AI contextual conversation tools. This is a system on your wearable, on your smart glasses, which will detect different times throughout the day when you have a chance to learn a little bit of the language. Maybe you're going for a run along the river. Maybe you're doing some errands at the grocery store. And it's going to spark a conversation with you that, for one thing, is at the fluency level that you can understand, simple enough for you to understand based off of what you've learned so far. But also, it's going to be contextually relevant. We know that people learn languages better when the information is relevant to the situation that they're in. So the system's going to grab your GPS and information about what you're doing and spark up a conversation about that. Maybe you're walking through the city, and it'll ask you about the landmarks that are around you. Or maybe you're going to the grocery store, and it's as simple as asking you about what groceries that you're picking up. But context isn't just GPS location. It's not just where we are. It's the information in the world around us. And so that doesn't look right, does it? Um, if we can get this video to play, we've also developed systems which can create an artificial world of immersion. You know, children every day are asking their parents, what's this? What's that? As they try to build up a vocabulary to help them understand what the things around them in the world are called, we can create this world of artificial immersion with smart glasses as well. This is a demo from a couple of years ago where we used the point of view camera in glasses to run object recognition on the world around us, and then we translate the title of those things so that we can annotate the world around us with the names of everything that we need to build up our vocabulary quickly. And this area is so exciting to me for another reason, because smart glasses are advancing so quickly. Just a few years ago, smart glasses were bulky and heavy and uncomfortable to wear, but they've rapidly developed to be comfortable enough, light enough, and stylish enough to be our everyday glasses. These Vuzix Z100 glasses I'm wearing right now are my everyday glasses. I have my prescription built in, and I wear them every day just like I used to wear my uh, dumb prescription glasses. So there's a lot more use cases that I could talk about in terms of language learning on smart glasses, but I want to quickly jump into the future to see where this technology might go as we're building out these super learning wearable tools. A lot of my research at the MIT Media Lab Fluid Interfaces Group is about combining together smart glasses and neurotechnology to help us learn better and faster. And in neuroscience, we've known for quite a long time that when you hear a word that you don't know or you see a word that you don't know, your brain gives off a very specific event-related potential. That's a little signal that tells us that you heard a word that you're not familiar with. And this is also true of confusion. We can detect with EEG when you're confused about something. And I can verify that this confusion algorithm works for me because it seems to always light up when somebody brings up quantum physics or my dating life. <laughs> but imagine applying that algorithm to these systems that I'm talking about today. Imagine taking that unknown word translation algorithm, uh, that unknown word translation feature on the glasses, which was just guessing which words you don't know, and actually having a ground truth from brain data, where we can understand the words you don't know and when you become confused and the grammar that slows you down, and actually fill in your gaps right when you need them in the moment. And this doesn't just help you to understand things in the moment. This could also help you over a longer period of time, because when we have that information about your confusion, we can build up a personalized curriculum that is based upon exactly where your knowledge gaps are. So when you sit down to learn that new language or whatever it is that you're learning, you could be focused on the things that you need the most. But the applications of neurotechnology for creating these super learning systems doesn't just stop there. We've known for a long time about audio evoked potentials. 
which is the idea that when somebody's speaking to me and I'm listening to them speak, the speech signal and the audio and the electrical signal in the audio processing portion of my brain will correlate. And this has been known for quite a while, but just in the last few years, some neuroscience researchers said, what if we spun this around? What if we flipped this, and while you're listening to a speech signal, we recorded it, and we transformed it just a little bit, and then we injected that into your brain with a little bit of brain stimulation called transcranial alternating current stimulation. And what they found was astonishing. They found that people were better able to understand, to remember, and to attend to that spoken information that's coming in. And so I'm really excited about the idea of applying that type of idea to language learning by embedding brain stimulation into glasses and using it when someone's learning a language. Imagine trying to listen to a stream of speech in a foreign language you don't know that well and being able to better understand and attend to that information using this simple brain stimulation signal. It's worth mentioning that this project is incredibly early. There are a lot of questions still to be answered. There's a lot of research to be done. It's actually so early that I'm as confused as you are as to why I'm up here now, but I'm very glad to be sharing these ideas with you. And I'm very grateful to my collaborators at the Media Lab, my PI Patty Moss, and collaborators at Team Open Smart Glasses for all the help so far in building out these tools. And I'd like to point out that this doesn't just apply to language learning. Language learning is something I'm super excited about myself, but these types of interventions can be applied to all kinds of areas of learning and education and understanding information in general. And I want to point out that today, a lot of us are concerned about the direction that technology is bringing us, especially in terms of our information, our attention, and our learning. People are concerned about the kind of attention ravaging that is happening with social media and concerned about how future technologies and the social media of today is affecting and impeding education of children. But I'd like to present a different narrative, a narrative where we build educational and learning technology that is as addictive as the social media is that we have today so that people can learn better than they ever have before and humanity can become more than it's ever been before. Thank you.